Hey, thank you for watching. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is RVTV, the Ripperman Valerius Show. And I am your host, Ripperman Valerius. Ladies and gents, our episode now is all about my first Mount Tulag climb happened last December 2013 and this is presented by Aventura Rippermania. Adventure starts here. Mount Tulag is Luzon's highest peak at 2,928 meters above sea level the third highest mountain in the Philippines, and the 26th highest peak of an island on Earth. It is second most prominent mountain in the Philippines, and it is a dormant volcano, according to Wikipedia. Climbing Mount Pulag was a long dream for a grown-up Boy Scout like me. When we started climbing mountains in Sorsogon, Back in the later years of 1990s, our cohort, Sagka Mountaineering Group, had already been dreaming of climbing mountains outside of our province or region. One of our target mountain to climb was Mount Pulag, dubbed as the Playground of the Gods. Prior climbing Mount Pulag, I climbed several mountains in the last quarter of the year uh, 2013. I completed seven minor climbs together with our outdoor adventure group Punta Malayo Mountaineers. The group we formed last September on that same year in my place of work, a major U.S. bank. The main goal of our group was to climb mountains as an after-work activity for work-life balance. On the time of our Mount Pula climb, I'm already a part of three mountaineering organizations. First, Sagka Mountaineering Group of Sorsogon City. Second is Punta Malayo Mountaineers of Taguig City. And the third is Mountain Climbers Alliance of the Philippines or MCAP. Special thanks to a friend of mine, the late great Sir Edwin Gatia, who vouched for me when I joined the group Mountain Climbers Alliance of the Philippines last October the year 2013. Rest in peace, Master Edwin. And now, permit me to share to you the moments of our Mount Pula climb happened last December 13 to 15, 2013. The story started when we departed from our home in Guadalupe, Makati. We rode a taxi going to Victory Liner Cubao Terminal where we met two other members of our climb team. We had a night trip from Cubao to Baguio City. The bus fare during that time was only 460 pesos compared to now. Now, the standing practice of mountaineers during that time when climbing Mount Pulag was we will ride a bus to Baguio City then we will meet up with our chartered uh, monster jeep at a gas station near the Victory Liner Terminal in Baguio City at around 3 in the morning of December 14 we arrive at the uh, Victory Liner uh, Terminal in Baguio City. From there, we were met uh, by the rest of the climbing team and our chartered monster jeep picked us up from there. 
now from uh, Baguio City to Ranger Station jump off of Mount Bulag, our transport will be this uh, big customized jeepney, uh, specially designed to tackle the dirt roads in uh, Cordilleras. Our chartered monster jeep um, was arranged by Jude. I knew him since our college days. And uh, special thanks to you, Jude, for inviting me to join the group. And uh, we traveled three to four hours from Baguio City to Mount Pulag Ranger Station in uh, Babalak, Kabayan, Benguet. The jump off for Ambangig Trail of Mount Pulag. Along the way, we, we had a stopover in a restaurant in Lebeng, Ambuklao, Benguet um, at around uh, 5 in the morning. We had our early heavy breakfast and we made sure we will have enough energy later for the climb. We arrive at the DNR Visitor Center in Ambangig, Daklan, Bokod, Benguet and made our mandatory registration and orientation prior to the actual climb. During that time, um, they do the presentation mostly by means of physical visual aids like a map printed on a paper. Nowadays, they have a big flat screen TV where they show the entire presentation conveniently. Now, going up to Ranger Station, along the way, our Jeep uh, got stuck. We had disembarked the jeep and walked for a distance so that the jeep will lighten up and move. And we arrived at Mount Pulag National Park Ranger Station in Babalak, Kabayan, Benguet before 12 noon of December 14. Now, here you can see the local guides and porters waiting to give uh, service to the weekend climbers of Mount Ulag. After the registration of our entire team at the office in Ranger Station, and after securing our guide and porter, we started our actual hiking before 1 in the afternoon of that day. and we arrived at Camp 1 before 2 in the afternoon on that same day. And we had our 5 to 10 minutes uh, rest at the waiting shed. our 5 to 10 minutes rest and we saw some campers already done pitching their tent at camp 2 and the view from camp 2 going up to camp 3 was so amazing from the tip of the Musi forest 
to rolling grasslands as far as your eyes can see. After pitching our tent and settling in, I started cooking a special dinner. The dinner I prepared was, of course, rice, lechon kawali, chop suey, and crab soup. And I have learned long time ago that nothing beats in boosting the morale of the team, like having a good warm meal after a long day hiking in the mountains that's for sure i can still remember that it was a bone cold temperature that night but still we managed to smile and enjoy the moment we prepared three layers of clothing for that night's uh, camping and we wrapped our feet with plastic then we wore two layers of socks and we had a bonnet for our heads and gloves uh, for our hands if i remember it right me and steve had a couple of uh, shots of whiskey just to keep us warm during the bone cold night at camp three now, I woke up so early the day after at uh, 4 in the morning of December 15, 2013. Then I boiled water for coffee. But after a minute or two, it was uh, already cold since the temperature at the campsite was uh, below zero. Yes, what can you say, my man? <laughs> Whiskey and coffee, great breakfast, man. Yes. Now, the following morning scene at the campsite, and it shows here, huh? it's already past 6 in the morning and still it's dark due to the thick fog. We were informed by our guide that we need to decamp early because there was a storm coming.
if I remember it right. We were advised by our guide not to continue hiking up to the summit of Mount Pulat. We were told that it was a useless effort since there will be no guaranteed view of the sea of clouds. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking, first of all, I didn't come to this mountain just for the view of the sea of clouds. My objective was clear to me, even at the beginning. My dream is to summit the highest mountain in Luzon, to set my feet on the third highest mountain in the Philippines. Yes, I will admit I have fear, but I also have courage. This wasn't the first time I experienced strong winds at the mountain top. I already had that type of strong winds experience camping at the summit of Mount Bulusan in Sorsogon back in the year 2000. Now, I may be arrogant that time to think that I can outsmart Mother Nature. At around uh, 10 in the morning of uh, December 15, um, we arrived at Camp 2. There, we cooked our sumptuous uh, brunch. It was uh, bacon, lechon kawali again, of course. We had uh, fried, uh, dried dilis paired with uh, chopped tomatoes and onions. Of course, rice and and coffee. And we also took photos together with our local uh, porter, Sir Gaspar, also known as Gaspi. Uh, the guy didn't let us, no matter what, until the end of the climb. And for that, respect, okay? Salamat, Gaspi. Maraming salamat. Now, at around 11 a.m., we started hiking back down from Camp 2, going back to Ranger Station. Like, it's just like a walk in the park again. Now, we brought back all the fun memories that we had. Memories that will echo moving forward in our existence. And so we arrived at Ranger Station at around 1 in the afternoon. Then we rested a bit, then cleaned up, and then 
organized our stuff prior to traveling back to Baguio. We, we were definitely tired, yes, but we don't mind because we were happy. I also took some photos of uh, the surrounding area in uh, Ranger Station and also took some uh, photos of local people living there in that area. Some locals were selling food to the hungry and tired climbers. And before 3 in the afternoon of that same day, we were already ready to travel back to Baguio City. And uh, we went back to the DNR Visitor Center prior to traveling back to Baguio City uh, for the mandatory lag out. This is to make sure that all the climbers who got up to Mount Bulag were safely got back down and everyone well accounted for. And then we, we rode on the, top, uh, on the top load of the monster jeep again, all the way back to Baguio City. Now, the following scenes were taken at the uh, perspective uh, riding at the top load of the Jeep we rode. And on the way to Baguio City, well, going back to Baguio City, we had another uh, stopover at the same restaurant where we stopped the previous day. And uh, we were back in Baguio City. Um, this core group here in the picture, we stayed in a hotel for over for overnight um, our agreed plan was to do our Baguio side trip the next day before traveling back to Manila and in that evening after our dinner we had our well-deserved after climb cold beer session while sharing stories of uh, moments from our recently concluded climbing adventure in the highest mountain of the zone. And the next morning, after our uh, breakfast, we went back to Victory Liner Terminal in Baguio to purchase our tickets for our travel back to Manila later on that same day. And we spent the whole day touring the famous spots in Baguio City. And also, we purchased our mga pasalubong for our family and friends back home in Manila 